Hey everybody, back in the shop. And today I did have the water pump and my hoses show up. So I'll get them swapped out, put on. I also have a tranny dipstick that showed up. I gotta go grab it and we gotta see if I can fish it down in here to get it in the tranny. See if I gotta alter the bracket of it in any way. Then we can get fluid in the tranny. Um, let's see, what else? It'll fill up everything. Oh, I gotta do my head grounds on my holly harness. That would've stopped me from starting the other day and I just thought about it as I was walking to the shop. So I gotta do that. And uh, yeah, we'll figure out some more stuff to do here while we're working. All right, I got my tranny dipstick in. I cut the factory mount off because it wants it behind the head. And I wanted it off to the side. So this way I can weld it up right there. And my dipstick tube is off to the side. All right, got the dipstick tube welded. It's in a good place, easy to access, not way back in there. Went ahead and got my grounds bolted up to the back of the head on both sides. I'm gonna hook up the battery and I just wanna turn the key over and see if this thing will start. she runs well sadly I thought I had spacers for my water pump not that one the one in there it's a early Camaro one but I can't find them so I have to order them not a big deal two days from ICT billet get them on but see I got one radiator hose set on there I need to get a, this other one down here Get it mounted. But that can wait. All right, I painted the trunk. I started foaming some of it. Just to kind of get rid of some of the road noise, insulate it. Um, the other thing I did, since I don't have the rest of my cooling system parts, is I got these headlights wired in. And they're pretty bright, so I'll kick them on and show you. Oh, I forgot I disconnected the battery. Some new LEDs, way brighter than the factory. That'll be nice going down the highway at night. Also, I got my exhaust I tigged it real quick I just cut a notch out of it folded it over and just ran a little quick tig pass on it so I got that aiming roughly where I want it it'll miss that cross member this one this one's interesting should not interrupt flow too much you can see where I dinged it. That's so I can get it as close to the body as I can, but still not rub on these bolts. And miss that bracket. And my tranny can still shift without hitting it. So that's nice. So I think my plan for the exhaust is I'm gonna come out of this one back a little further. Um, let me get Closer you can see, I have to go back a ways to miss my torque arm bracket. But I think I'm gonna come back here and 90 over and I'm gonna 90 and connect or something, or maybe I'll run dual. Um, 
But if I can 90 here underneath the tranny bracket, maybe leave enough room so I can get this bolt go straight and run duals underneath here. So the duals will come here and maybe dump out right here. You know, road height be about here of a couple inches below it. I think I might just dump them out here and I'll just build a hanger off of here to grab both of them and run duels out. I think that's my plan. I don't have a, rock, a lot of room to work with under here. That's so I'm gonna do what I can. Might do resignators. Might use this cavity to run dual resignators as high as I can and dip the pipe under the frame just to tone it down a little bit, but I haven't decided yet. Another thing I went ahead and did when you weren't watching is kind of build out the exhaust. I think somewhere I have a video of it, but for some reason I couldn't find it. But uh, it just wise into one right there. But you can see, um, of course I got the front lifted up in the one corner just a little bit because the tire's off doing brakes. But I got four or five inches of clearance. So it's not terrible. It'll have a resignator up in there and then it'll 90 and turn out. But on the plus side, she starts, even though I'm missing some things. And that's literally just a wizard tune. Um, but yeah, it runs. So hopefully my spacers show up by Friday. That'd be awesome. Then I can finish my whole cooling system and go take it for a test drive. I've been kind of doing some work without showing you guys. So anyways, this is my Morphodite forced induction hood. I am not really concerned. I'm going to get a cowl hood eventually, but I needed room for that tall LS TBSS intake. But anyways, I'm going to do screen here and a little bit of screen in the back corners to let some air out. So maybe it'll be like a Venturi-ish. Nothing special, but... It does run, seen that in previous video to this, but um, I do need to get water pump spacers on. Sh delivery date, I think, is Monday. Today's Friday, so I got brakes to do in the front and wheel bearings to grease and seals, and I got the screens to do on here. So I'm going to focus on doing that stuff tonight. Well, I spent some time, got the thing all tacked on. This stuff's just going to be held in with a bunch of tacks. I haven't decided. I might finish weld some of that out. In the back, I put a lot of weld um, over there and over here. I'll probably finish out that. Then I'll open up the hood and finish my vertical rods. And I might do a couple inches on the front. I just don't want this thing to pick up and open up like a tuna can. But uh, I think it's plenty strong as it is. You can see it'll flow air in and maybe venturi some out the back and relieve some pressure from that. Well, I was just getting ready to change the caliper and pads. Should probably even do the rotor. See it's thin. Can't tell if that's a crack. Guess I'll think on it. Then I need to do bearings too if I do that. So it just opens up a whole can of worms. 
probably the proper thing to do, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the caliper and the pads, but I need to get this line. Well, while I was turning this apart, I realized one, this rotor on the backside is destroyed. It is wavier than the ocean. Um, also, that brake line's blown out. So I ordered new rotors, new bearings through O'Reilly's and a new hose. Hose won't be here till Tuesday. And then realized the sway bar bushing links are destroyed too. So I ordered those. Those won't be here till Tuesday. But the rotors and the bearings are in stock. So I'm going to go ahead and go pick them up. Get them thrown in. Get my front end together, new brake pads, new calipers, which I have sitting in the back. And then it's just a waiting game till the rest of the parts show up, which I'm still waiting on water pump parts, so it don't matter. All right, I got some brakes, brake rotors, brake hose, and bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this whole assembly taken apart, and then I'll pop the races, races for the new bearings in the rotors and then grease the bearings and get it all thrown together. All right, I got the caliper off. I went ahead and yanked the old brake line. Luckily that fitting came off super easy. So brake line was super easy to change. Just got it dangling for right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this rotor assembly off. Yep, yep, that, that right there. I mean, it still spins good, but there's definitely some rust and crap in there. All right, this is my new brake rotor. Um, brand new from O'Reilly's. This is the rear bearing. I gotta pack that with grease and then I can put the seal in. Uh, I already got my races knocked in both sides, so. I'll get this packed, the rear seal in, I'll flip it over, or I'll go ahead and slide it on. I'll get the outer bearing packed and get it put in with some grease in the middle. And we'll go ahead and snug this thing up and on there. All right, got the inner bearing all greased up. Got the new seal setting in there. This will go in further. It's just sitting there loose. I went ahead and packed the outer bearing. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip this thing on and get it all adjusted. All right, so make sure you clean everything and then make sure you put a big gob of grease in the center. You don't have to fill it all up, but I'll take like, take the tub of grease and I'll take a big old fingerful and I'll smear it on the inside. If this ever gets warm, it helps that extra grease kind of get into the bearings. So the other thing, I went ahead and uh, I tightened this up almost as tight as I can get it with a 16 inch wrench or something, but get it tight and you'll feel this has like a ton of friction on it when you're spinning it. And then I try to back it up a quarter of a turn and then as close as I can get to sliding the cotter in. And that's not a guarantee. It just gets you in the ballpark. It's all on feel. You don't want it to be tight, but you don't want it to just be loose and you shouldn't be able to clunk it back and forth. You probably heard something there. I didn't realize my can I'm sitting on is rocking, but this shouldn't move at all. Um, shouldn't clunk too much. And I always put a new cotter key in. Um, usually the old one's pretty mangled. But even if I've been in them and I'm readjusting, it's just good peace of mind. I always replace it. Um, yeah. So next thing, just make sure you always brake clean these off because you're touching them with greasy fingers. Brake clean them off, wipe them off so they're clean. And then go ahead and start putting your brake stuff on. And remember, if you're unsure of caliper orientation, the bleeder always goes up. All right, new caliper's on. Just got to go in back here and hook up this brake line. 
get a new banjo bolt and washers on. All right, painted my hub black and then just kind of touched up some of the stuff in here except for up high because I didn't really care. Just stuff from kind of eye level. Uh, threw some paint on it. But anyways, this side is technically done. Um, it does need to be blood, but I'm going to hop over to the other side and just repeat this whole process. So I'm not going to take you through it. I'll just show you the end. And uh, that'll be it for brakes. All right, got the passenger side done minus that brake line. I think it comes in Monday or Tuesday. So this side will just have to sit on a jack and a jack stand until that line shows up. Um, which is fine because the water pump and all those parts, or the water pump's here, but the brackets or the spacers will be here till Monday anyways. So I really can't drive this thing or do anything until then. So another day don't really hurt. Well, that's it for this video for now. Um, it's just a waiting game on parts. So as soon as they're all here and I get this put together, I'll be going on a test drive. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you guys want to see more.